We are fast approaching the end time and God is tugging at the hearts of people to choose righteousness. For the Bible teaches that God will stand strong delusion, that they will believe a lie because they love unrighteousness. And the child of God is commanded in Hebrews chapter 10 that he should not forsake the assembling of, your, of ourselves together, but to exhort one another so much more as we see the day approaching. That is for protection to the child of God, for the Lord God knows that those deceptive spirits will try the heart of every person. And we can see all around what is happening to the peoples of this planet. The governments are leading nations to destruction. We can see it in our own government, how they are passing laws which cause Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed. And I know for a fact that if things don't turn around, this is exactly what is waiting for our country, Canada. The immorality, the, the, the terrible de degeneration of the people of our country is coming to a point where God will have to judge us. The child of God stands and asks himself, what can we do? We pray for righteousness, but evil seems to abound on every hand. Well, the Bible teaches that we should not forsake our, uh, the, uh, the assembling of ourselves together for one reason, and that is to comfort one another and to exhort one another to live in holiness and righteousness before our Lord God. Today I want to speak of that comfort that the Lord God promises the believer. But before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I pray that the power of your Spirit will rest upon this message so that people will find joy and peace and comfort. I pray, O oh God, that hearts will be opened up today, that they will see, O oh God, that you're soon coming back for us. I pray, precious Father, that you will open the hearts and minds of those who are struggling, O oh God, with their own salvation, that they will be able to understand the victory that you gave us at the cross when you gave yourself for us. I thank you, O oh precious God, for your word. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible teaches us that we are supposed to look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the day to look forward to that. For iniquity is abounding at every corner. It seems like that the schools are invaded with Satan himself teaching the young children from the age of six when they start school to believe in, in such heresy it boggles the mind. Things are being taught in our schools that years ago would have caused an uproar. People are being forced to take their children out of public schools to teach them at home so that they will not be polluted with the gross, gross immorality that is being taught in the schools today. The child of God needs to stand fast to hold on to the Word of God for instruction. For the Bible teaches that God has left, for, for, for the Bible has been left us for instruction so that we can know what to do in this hour of need. What is the child of God to look forward to? The Bible teaches in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that there is a day coming when the Lord God 
will take his children out of this confusion and out of this mess. And he tells us in chapter 5 of Thessalonians that if we study the Bible, we the children of God who study the Bible, we are not in darkness, but we are in light. I will read you those scriptures here. You brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, but we have a choice. He tells us, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in, sleep in the night and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or are asleep, we should live together with Him. And then He goes on to tell, to com to tell us, therefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling us here that we are the children of light and that we should seek out the things that are coming upon this planet, not to bury our head in the sand like an ostrich does when danger is around, but we are supposed to look up and to warn one another. There are so many people who try not to watch the news or read newspapers because they are troubled by the terrible things that are happening all over the planet. That is a cop-out for the Lord God knows, put these signs there for us to know the signs of the times. For His coming is drawing near, it is lining up, with revelations. You can watch, you can read revelations on the news today if you pay careful attention. One way may ask, how about the terrible uh, deception that is happening all over the planet where people are turning away from God in by the hundreds of millions they are turning away from God the Bible teaches that in the last days because of unrighteousness of the people's hearts he will send strong delusion that people will believe a lie in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 it tells us that the Antichrist, Satan's masterpiece, will come upon the scene and lead millions astray. And the Bible teaches us in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, the reason why they are being led astray is because of their unrighteous hearts. It tells us here that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Yes, dear friends, this is the reason why deception is so prevalent on this planet already. Because of the unrighteous hearts of the people. We may ask, what can we do to protect ourselves? It is to stay in the Word of God and to edify and comfort one another so that we can see the traps that Satan sets up for us. The child of God is not in danger if he will stay with the word of God and not be persuaded from it. But if the child of God will leave the word of God, there is a terrible confusion that will happen to him. Even though in the end, the Lord God will make sure that none of his are lost. But during the time of your stay here on earth, you can escape a lot of confusion if you will stay in the Word of God and follow the blueprint that God has set before us. Yes, Jesus wants His child to walk in holiness and He wants us to be informed so that we will not be confused or afraid. The Bible teaches in First and Second Thessalonians to comfort one another because of the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ right in the midst 
of the terrible confusion. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In Thessalonians it tells us, to comfort one another with the soon appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ right in the middle of this terrible confusion. So where do you stand on this subject? Have you studied the Word of God? Are you informed in what's going on in the world? We know that the whole world is confused. The other day I was watching an interview they were interviewing a lady from Britain who was working to clear up the minefields all around the world. And minefields are where the, the soldiers put down explosives and a person who steps into them will either lose his life or his leg. And she was telling the whole world how she went to President Putin of, the, of Russia and how nice he was and how he had told her that he will try his best to help her in clearing all those landmines. And, and that at the same time you realized what a, a terrible deception that lady was in. She does not at all study the track record of those people. They want those people, they want people to believe that they are out to help the world in righteousness, where in reality they are hoodwinking everybody and waiting for the chance to take over this whole planet and to destroy the people of God. Yes, this is what is waiting for this planet. They may have ever so nice words. But when it will come down to it, we will see the true intentions of the peoples who govern this planet today. So I'm asking the child of God, are you sure you know where you stand with Christ? To escape the confusion that is happening all around the planet. We need to understand our position in the Lord Jesus Christ so that those confusing spirit, spirits will not be able to bring us into confusion. The Lord God has His word for us and we need to study it. We need to find out where we stand with Him so that we will not be led astray. And for those of you who don't know Jesus, you can come to Him today and escape the terrible time of suffering that is waiting for this planet. For the Bible very clearly tells us that the child of God will escape those, this hour of confusion. It tells us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, that it tells us, because we have kept the word of the Lord, He will also keep us from the hour of temptation that shall come upon this world to try all the people. So God is giving us a promise. In Titus, He is telling us to wait and watch and look for the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Thessalonians, He tells us that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ will rise and we will be changed and then we will be cut up to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we ever be with the Lord. And when will that happen? That will happen just before the Antichrist will come upon the scene. For the Bible teaches the terrible man of iniquity cannot be revealed till the one who is holding him back is taken out of the way. And there is only one force that is holding him back, and that is the Holy Spirit which indwells the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, the Christians, are 
the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the salt of the earth. We are the preservative that God has placed upon this planet to keep back the evil. And once the salt, the preservative, is removed, then all hell will break loose on this planet. So I'm asking you, dear sinner friend, are you sure you want to go through this terrible time of suffering and tribulation? You need not to. For the Lord God is stretching out His arms. He's calling your name. He created you and He wants to save you. And how did the Lord Jesus Christ save us? He saved us by putting to rest the justice that the Lord God demanded for the payment of sin. He took sin upon himself and was nailed to the tree and thus sin was paid for. When Jesus Christ gave his life for you and for me, he stilled the anger of God by paying the terrible price that God demanded in payment for sin. The Lord will open your heart to this revelation and bless you with the joy of salvation. Amen. As we see the end approaching, we here at Reaching Out Ministries are pooling our time and our money to preach the message of salvation over the airwaves and through the internet. The messages are designed to challenge the hearts of the people. They may be crude and simple, but I feel that people's hearts are being touched. We want, I want people to understand that we are living in the last days and perilous times are upon this planet. The deception that is invading the hearts of the people is incredible. Regardless what our social standing is in life, regardless how big our church is, the gospel of salvation is still the most important message to preach. People need to be saved. They need to understand that salvation only comes through the blood sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand if we stray too far from that simple message, we get caught up in doctrines that confuse people. So, I want to make myself clear. The reason that we are so adamant in preaching this gospel is because when we see the signs of the times, when we look at the signs of the times, we know the day is here that the Lord Jesus is going to split the skies and come back and take his church out of this confusion. I know there are people who don't believe in the rapture. But that is beside the point. The Bible seems to have more proof of the rapture than of any other doctrine. And this is why I believe in the rapture, because the Bible say, teaches us that we should look for the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we see the signs of the times unfolding. And that is found in Titus chapter 2. So I'm asking you today, where do you stand with this Jesus? Whether you believe in the rapture or not does not matter. But do you fully understand your position in Christ for the confusion that is coming upon this planet will try all them who are not sure of themselves. This is why I am preaching that a person should seek the face of God and find out his standing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you do not know your assurance of salvation or don't understand it, you will be swayed by every wind of doctrine that will come along because those seducing spirits have ways 
to reach people where they do not under, which they do not understand. Every person has a blind side. And you may ask, what is a blind side? A blind side is something that you cannot see. In truck driver terms, we, we, we know what it means. There is a blind side that we do not see when we back up or when we drive. So we have to be extra careful of those blind sides. And I'm asking you today, have you checked the Word of God whether where your blind side is? You may be fiercely, strongly opinioned that you know where you stand, but I have news for you. Satan is a lot smarter than you are. And unless you know you're standing in Christ Jesus, you will come into confusion. And it's going to be more and more dangerous as we see the day approaching. So I am asking you, turn to the Word of God, seek the face of God, and find out where you stand with Christ. And for those of you who don't know Jesus, if you do not come aboard, there is waiting for you a terrible time of suffering and maybe eventually the eternal lake of fire. So Jesus is calling you today to come to Him. We are trying to pe reach people through the airwaves, over the internet, so that they can be informed. We are trying to bring forth news that is happening today that has significant meaning as far as the end times is concerned. So I ask, I'm asking you, pay attention. Check out our website. It is reachingoutministries.com and you will find different links there where Christian uh, Christian programs can be found where they also preach the soon coming of the Lord and they show us the signs of the end times. The Lord will open your heart and make you a blessing to many if you will take time out and seek the face of God and find out where you stand with this great and glorious God call Jesus. The Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing. Amen.